rise and remove your caps as you honor America and playing the national anthem. Please remain standing for the playing of the Unioto High School alma mater. Now it's time to groove with Outcasts the way you move.
Hey, all you football fans out there, welcome to Unyota High School for Football Friday Night. Here come the new world of children. Good evening and happy Friday as we welcome you in to our week 11 coverage here on Southern Ohio Sports Authority presented by Ohio Health tonight. We're set up here at Uniota High School as the Shermans are set to host the defending state champs, the Clinton Massey Falcons in tonight's Division 4 Region, I believe 16 round one playoff matchup between these two teams. Hi everybody, I'm Dewey Daly. Tagging along with me tonight, my dad, Tim Daly. Carson Francis helping us out on the camera as always. You know, it, 
it couldn't get much more interesting than this. You, you take a Clinton <coughs> Massey team who went 14-1 and one a season <coughs> ago, graduated 25 seniors out of that state title team. They come back this year. They, they start off the season 0-4, finished 5-1. Of those four losses, you have Waynesville, Edgewood, Bishop Fenwick, and St. Francis de Sales. Edgewood and St. Francis de Sales, two Division II teams. So you know the strength of schedule is always going to be there for Clinton Massey. For Uniota, a 9-1 regular season record. Uh, only lost coming to Zane Trace. That was in Week 7. Started off 6-0, picked up a 3-0 non-conference schedule. Uh, those wins were over Vinton County, Amanda Clear Creek, and a big win over Waverly. You know, we, you know, if, if you're from the area, you know, you know what I think beat Waverly now two times in their last three meetings. But before that, it's been a pretty dominant series for the Tigers. Uh, we look here at tonight, Clint Massey winning the toss, electing to receive. for the Falcons, number six, Logan Chester, and number 18, Cooper Carmack. So that'll bring on, as of now, it'll be River Pettigrew booting it away for the Shermans. They also have Lucas Haynes, who typically does the PATs, and if they do attempt a field goal, it'll most likely be Haynes as well. Two guys back deep for the Falcons, number 18, Cooper Carmack as well as number six, Logan Chesser. Chesser, an 80-yard kick return in the team's Week 10 win. That was against Wilmington. Should be an interesting matchup here tonight. You well, take a 5-5 five and five team, you know, it's hard to compare records when you take a team that plays a schedule like Clinton Massey does, and then you compare them to a team that plays Unyota's schedule in the SVC at 9-1. and one. So once you get to the playoffs, you can't really use record as a defining staple in how, you know, you look at a team up front before you actually see them play. Well, I mean, <clears throat> the bottom line is is that Clinton Massey, Massey is on a whole nother level than what Union Yoda is accustomed to dealing with. And the question of it is, is how much, you know, how much progress has Union Yoda made versus how far backwards Clinton Massey has come. And we're about to see what's happened because you're going to see a contrast in football tonight. There's no question. So we looked the last week. Looks like he's going to come out now. A quarterback, Keegan Lamb, for the Falcons. Did not play last week. It was Jack Elkins who stepped in and played a big role in that game. Got the team the win, although this team's not going to pass. 29 passing attempts on the season for Lamb. Elkins did not attempt to pass last game. Zero pass attempts for him. Over 300 rushing yards for the Falcons. You know this offense. You know what you're going to get. See, be interesting how they're going to execute that here tonight. Unbalanced. Yep, three men in the backfield. It's going to be McDowell on the first carry. Comes up about a yard short of the first down. Bring up a second down and short here. You know, we talked pregame. We said this is a Clinton Massey team. No matter what type of players they have, they're going to line up and say, you know, we're coming. And are you going to stop us or are you not? That's exactly what's going to happen. Union is not going to have to look around to figure out where the football is. It's just a question if they can get enough personnel to the ball quick enough. And they've got to be able to handle up. They've got to be able to handle the physicality up front. The McDowell run sets him up second down and one. Same formation here, although the receiver flipped to the left side this time. Looks like it's going to be a handoff to the fullback. I Brody mean, Clutter. And the truth be told, you know, they're, they're kind of double tied or tight in a wing with the split. Union is not even guarding the split. I mean, he's sneaking off. So they're trying to play with 11 guys basically in the box. Be a first down for Clint Massey, first and ten, right around the 38-yard line. See, and all he's trying to do is spread out farther, farther, farther to drag you away from the line of scrimmage. This time, going to be handoff up the middle again. It's Hunter off to the races, past the 50-yard line. Andrew Griffin comes up with the tackle. But not before, about a 30-yard gain for Gavin Hunter. That flips the field here and puts Clinton Massey in Unioda territory. Again, he's making, you know, just like the first play, he's making five, six yards 
before contact. And, and uh, let's face it, these guys are used to carrying the ball. They're determined. And if Union Hood doesn't get that fixed pretty quick, this, this, uh, this isn't the start they were looking for, for sure. First down and 10 on the Unioda 34-yard line. Bit of a different look here for Clint Massey coming in motion. That's Hunter. But it looks like it'll be Brody Clutter straight ahead. Again, they, they give the appearance of jet sweep or handoff sweep, and it ends up being fullback trap. Now you look at this Clint Massey offensive line, five seniors up front. In a pre in a preseason interview, Coach Dan McSurley quoted this as being the best group of linemen he's ever had. And when asked if he'd rather have experienced linemen and inexperienced ball handlers or the other way around, he was pretty pretty quick to point out he'd rather have the experienced linemen. Oh, there's no doubt. Another carry to the left side, across the 25-yard line. Should be just enough for a first down, and it will. That was Gavin Hunter once again. Another first down carry for the senior. Again, I'm just waiting. That's, a, that's the second time they've went on balance, and I'm just waiting for Jim Tharp to show up and check in for Clinton Massey. Really? Clinton Massey, a little more wishbony, you know, triple, uh, triple option-y than you Yoda is, but both teams run that type of offense. So you know, it'll be kind of interesting when Union Yoda gets the ball to see how a team like Clint Massey will defend that. First down and 10, handoff to the left side. I believe that was Hunter once again, brought down just Number short of the 20 yard line. Again, it's just, it's just, you know, handoff left, handoff right, and they're just trying, <clears throat> they're just trying to block you for five yards and then let the running back to get what he can get after contact. And that's basically, I promise you, five yards is an extremely successful play for them. So second down and seven on the Unio to 21 yard line. Brady Russell out wide to the right side. Not listed as a wide receiver, listed as a split in for the Falcons. This time, it'll be Logan Chesser, the ball carrier. I can tell you one Hunter. thing. I don't think number three, he's a lonely guy out there, boy. Uh, yeah, leading receiver for the Falcons was actually tied in Brighton Rodman. Four catches, a buck 13 catches. on the season, and two yeah. touchdowns. This is a big third down well, here for it's, Union Yoda. It's not a big, it's really not a big play because it's four down territory. Well, you know, not as I mean, if they can get a, they can get a, a tackle for a loss right. here, it would be nice. Three back backfield for the Falcons. It'll be Chester to the right side, and he's got the first down for the Falcons. Number eight, Hunter, the ball carrier. Or close to it. I mean, in the bottom line, that's what they're counting on. They're counting on the, their that offensive linemen the getting line movement up front. That looks like they're going to work him about I, a half I didn't yard think, short. Yeah, I, didn't, I thought he got to the line. I did think he got a first down, but I knew it was close. Now, this is kind of a bigger play. But, again, if, if they come even close to stopping him for anything less than three or four yards. But this is where you change your defense and maybe go a little seven diamond. Five linemen for Unioda straight ahead. It's Clutter. And it looks like he's got the first down by a yard or two. It'll be a new set of downs for Clinton Massey. And it's actually pretty ideal when you get a first down right around the 15 because it's not in goal, right. but you are in the red zone, and you can still get a first down right around the five or four-yard line. Right. First down, Bobby. Right around seven minutes to go here in the opening quarter. We know Clinton Massey going to run a lot of time off this clock with this type of offense. And you keep the ball out of the air and out of the boundaries. This time to the left side across the 10. Brought down by a host of Shermans. Again, you know, the, the only way that, that you're going to have any type of success against this type of offense is you have to stop them on first and second down and get them into something that they don't want to be in. And, Obviously, this possession hasn't, that hasn't happened yet. And let's face it, half the first quarter's already gone. And, and you know, of course, they're just inside the 10-yard line, but it may take them two more minutes to score. Right. So second down and eight. Double excuse me, second bone. down and six from the eight. 
Three men in the backfield to the left side. That's Hunter on the carry. Good stop there by the Union the defensive the line. Way. May have okay. lost a yard or maybe got yeah, right back to the that, line That's of probably their best defensive play right there. Third down and six here. Now, obviously, well, I can't say obviously because you know, we're not exactly familiar with the kicking situation at Clint Massey, whether they would settle for a field goal, but knowing Dan McSurley and knowing that uh, they went for two last year after they scored a touchdown to make it 27-28, went for two and made it 29-28 to win the state title. I think there was like 45 seconds left. I'd say Coach McSurley probably not going to settle for a field goal here. No. Here's a toss to the right side. It's Chesser across the five and into the end zone for the Falcon touchdown. And that's the very first time they've even come close to running outside. And I can assure you that's coaching right there because I promise you, you know, everything's been jammed up inside the ends and then all of a sudden they're getting a, a very we-need-a-play type play. And what do they do? They run outside and got everybody. The kid had outside leverage as soon as he had his hands on the ball. Ian McGinnis on for the point after, splits the uprights. And that makes it a 7-0 ball game with 5.27 to go here in the opening quarter of tonight's Division IV Round 1 matchup. That touchdown was Logan Chesser's eighth on the season. Technically, I believe it's his ninth touchdown if you include the kick return last season or any kick return he's had on the year. His eighth rushing touchdown of the season gets Clint Massey out to a 7-0 lead. And as you said, about six and a half minutes off the board. If you're you, Yoda, you know what? You can't turn the ball over here. Is you know a turnover really could kill you because you know let's say you know hypothetically Clint Massey if they get the ball right now again, I mean they're going to take it down to halfway. You know, well, in the second quarter. I mean, okay, they scored on their opening drive. That doesn't it, mean right. No, it doesn't right. really mean anything. I mean that those points are not going to win you this game. Yoda just has to do what they have to do, and, and whether that's you know, and let's face it. Uniota is a fairly physical offensive team too, with right. with multiple. Well, you can't go nine and one without being no, too physical. No, you got to have a pair and a spare, and they got a pair and about three more right. spares. But but again, Uniota will be more balanced. But we'll just have to see what happens. I mean, you know, everybody gets the ball the same amount right. of time, so you know they just have to do what they have to do. McGinnis on to boot it away for the Falcons. Matt Griffin and Maddox Fox back deep for the Shermans. A nice kick from McGinnis. Griffin will get it right around his own three-yard line, past the 15, and he's got it past the 20 with some room to run, and he gets it to right around the 32-yard line. A nice return from Griffin. I'll tell you what, we've got two pretty good kickers here tonight on both teams. No, that, we've, we've seen Haynes. Yeah. You know, we've had Haynes a couple times this year, and, you know, we've seen him booted into the end zone, and McGinnis only about two or three yards away there. I promise you that kid plays soccer. Now, he put a good shot on Now, if you yeah. looked at it, it was kind of spinning – yeah. sideways a little bit but, but it had some age on right. it too yeah. he kicked it in the air and i mean it was legit and 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 really griffin did a pretty decent job on the return now big question for union to come into this game was whether right tackle jordan perkins would be ready to go and as of now it looks like he's out there as dre the takes edge. a sweep to the right side and is pushed out of bounds right around the 40 yard line it should bring up a second down and short but for in an out, outstanding job, and I'm not sure if that was Tuttle or who the back was that got the edge hooked. Dre got outside, got his shoulders turned, and picked up seven, eight yards. Now, again, that's a good play to start with, but I think the hay is up inside. Perkins, we believe, got banged up a bit in the Paint Valley game. I think he missed weeks eight and, or excuse me, nine and ten. As this time, it's Tuttle to the left side, cuts it up to the 40, and maybe got a yard. Bring up about a third and two here for Yoda. But if Perkins was unable to go, we believe sophomore Xander Carey would step in in his spot. But once again, as of now, looks like Perkins is good to go for Yoda. Third down and two for the Shermans on their own 41. I really think if Tuttle would have been a little bit more patient and used the blocker that he had in front of him, he might have been able to get outside and get closer to the first down. Third down and two, a lot of movement here for Yoda. Hoops in the pistol. Here's a toss to the right side. That's to mid. Looking for the edge. He's got it across the 45 and out of bounds at the 49-yard line. And that'll be a new set of downs for Yoda. 
And that, I don't know if you saw there towards the end of the play, but Maddox Fox run his guy about 10 yards out of bounds. He needs to be careful about that. But a good, there, there's a really good call there. I actually expected to get up and that be number one, but it was three. Now let's not get, you know, I can tell you after a couple of first downs, which obviously they've had here, and they've done it on the ground. Now it's been kind of a different, they've been more outside than inside, where Massey's been more inside than outside. But I promise you, Matt might want to show, or he might think to show a pass here. Dre in motion, hoops back to pass, looking for Fox. He's got him. He makes the grab, a slant first route down. from Fox, gets the first down. Really good throw by ne or by uh, Newton. Really good throw. And again, I'm not surprised by the call, but I'd come right back up in here and slug him again. 46 catches for 877 yards and 12 touchdowns. Any single season record, and I think it'd be a safe bet, any career record in regard to receiving. Maddox Fox probably holds that at this point. I know for sure he holds all the single season. And I'm pretty sure he holds the all-time receiving yards and touchdowns. I'm not sure if he has the receptions, but if not, extremely close. And Griffin, I don't, I don't know if Griffin was in there at the beginning of the drive, but he's in there now. Dre once again, a Good sweep run. to the right side, and he's brought down around the 45-yard line. It'll set up about a second down and three for you. Yoda, second time we've seen Dre on the sweep play. Yeah, now I can tell you, that play, that play was blocked extremely well. Dre made a nice room, put his head down, and if I'm not mistaken, I think he got seven the first time he touched the ball. That play was run a lot better that time. Yeah, Matt Griffin not technically a starter on the Yoda offense, although with 67 rushes for 853 and I believe 17 rushing touchdowns. He might as well be as hoops. A deep drop here, probably a screen. Looking right down the middle, it's DeMint. They've got the first down. Oh, that's not targeting. DeMint takes a big hit towards the end of that play. It Ooh. will be a first down. I'm not too sure Uniona didn't have a wide receiver or a lineman downfield, but. Well, it was, I know, mean, he got you, hit right. That was right. a helmet to helmet hit. As soon as you see hoops drop back about 10 or 15 yards and, you know, all the hog mollies for Clinton Massey coming for him, you know, from up here, obviously, Middle you can screen. tell it's a screen. Yeah. I was trying to – I couldn't exactly Which find again, where the running back was. but oh, he was in Eventually, there. I yeah. found him, yeah. That, that's a really good call, too, again. I give uh, Coach Hoops a, a, a pat on the back for that one. Hoops in the pistol here. Dre, once again, this time it's going to be Griffin across the 30 – or excuse me, across the 25. Picked up about four. Yeah, four or five yards on the play. Griffin actually an SVC leading 12.7 yards per carry. That was around 15 when we did the Zane Trace game back in week seven. But obviously 15 yards per carry going to be a bit difficult to maintain. Yeah, like 27-3 per reception for a wide receiver, 27-3. The second down and six from the Clinton Massey, 23. This time going to be Griffin straight ahead once again, claws his way to the 20-yard line. Looks again, like he'll bring up about a third and two. Again, uh, not a lot of pressure on the call here. You can keep this pretty close to the vest because you're well within four down territory here. You just have to have a positive play here. And again, they haven't stopped Uniota for less than two or three yards of right. crack either. So we'll see again. This is just... You know, here we are, we're gonna run right here, here we come. Let's see what you got. Under two minutes to go here in the opening quarter of tonight's matchup. Gonna be Demen across the, the 20. I think he's about a yard progress. short. Now they're gonna only give him about a yard on the play. Kinda just tippy-toed up in there and he should be slamming that ball up in there. So that'll bring up about a fourth and maybe a long one here. For Yoda, looks like Haynes going to stay on the sideline. Yoda going to try to get this here. Nah, nah, they can get this. Run a little check with me here. You'd have to think the money man here is Griffin. Same play. Big Same fourth play. down play here for Yoda. Griffin straight ahead. He didn't get and it. I tell you what, Clinton Massey may have made the stop. And they did a turnover on downs for Yoda. Clinton Massey makes the fourth and one stand, and they'll take over on their own 19 with 54 seconds to go. 
Okay, so if this is a baseball game, it's one to nothing. So everybody's had an inning, everybody's had their swings. I agree with the call. I do agree with the call. You know, the problem with running outside is it just takes a little bit of time to develop. And, when you, you know, you need that yard, yard and a half. Right, and if you, you don't get, get to the, the edge, line, right. Yeah, yeah, you want to get to the line of scrimmage as quick as you can. They're just going to have to do I mean, they're going to have to stop them sooner or later. So that'll bring Keegan Lamb and the Falcon offense back onto the field. Similar formation here for Clint Massey. Three men in the backfield. It'll be a handoff to the right side. That's Chesser with a ton of room to the right side. He cuts it back up across the 50, where he'll eventually be taken down around the 46-yard line. About a 34-yard carry there for Chesser. Gets Clinton Massey onto the Uniota side of the field. Again, pretty wet play block pretty well. He gets to the second level pretty much untouched. Breaks a tackle, gets in space, breaks another tackle. Now Chesser not leading the team in carries, however, leading the team in rushing yards, leading the team in yards per carry, and second in the team in rushing touchdowns. Brighton Rodman all by himself on the left side. Going to be another handoff straight up the middle. It looks like the back will get to right around the 45-yard line, so pick up a one or two on the play. That time it was Gavin Hunter. So that'll bring up a second and eight. Now, we're going to get quarter here, but this, this isn't a big play so far as the game's concerned, but I think from finding out what has to be done to be able to get a, a, a little to no gain play here and finally get these guys in the third or sixth, third and seven, uh, that could be big. We'll take a quick break. You're watching Ohio High School Football right here on Southern Ohio Sports Authority presented by Ohio Health. At Ohio Health, you can see your doctor here, or here, on this, or on these. And no matter if you're over here, over there, or anywhere in between, you'll feel good knowing Ohio Health provides the finest care anywhere. Schedule care today at ohiohealth.com slash finest care. Hey, Mike Glockner here from the Glockner family of dealerships. Want to wish all the fall sports athletes a very safe and successful year. Good luck. We welcome you back in here to Uniota High School. The Shermans playing host to the Clinton Massey Falcons in tonight's Division Four Round One playoff matchup. Seven nothing lead for Clinton Massey in the first quarter. They're able to force a turnover on downs, took over around their own 20. And now right around the Uniota 40-yard line faced for the second down, or excuse me, a third down six, and three. There. They had him at the line of scrimmage and, and you know, a kid broke an arm tackle. You just have to, you just have to make plays. You got to get guys on the ground. Now, again, if they can get him in, I don't think fourth and one's that big of a deal, but if they can get him in a fourth and three or four, they may punt. Now, one interesting thing here is actually lined up out wide, number 19, Jack Elkins. That's the normal backup unbalanced, quarterback. Unbalanced, unbalanced, unbalanced. And every time they've run to the unbalanced. Yep, Hunter to the left side. Close to a first down. We have a flag after the play. Tackle made number 14, Summer. So as of now, has the first down. Well, no, I it, I, I think it was, I thought they were calling late hit, but but it, I, I didn't have a real good look at it and I didn't have a very good angle of it. But it looked like to me they threw the ball just after the play had ended. So we'll wait for the call here. Picking it up. So there no, is. No, no, no. Yeah, he is picking it yeah, up. No flag on the play. Looks like they got him marked right at the 37 yard line, which is where the line to gain was. 
So this is either a first down or fourth and about a foot, maybe less than that. I think it's about a half a ball short. If the lines are straight, <laughs> yeah, you get on them turf fields and you right. can say boom, and boom, boom, boom. But you know, sometimes there's a little weeble wobble to these bad boys. I think it's about a half a ball to a ball. Well, originally short. they had it marked at the 35, and then they scoot, they moved it back a couple of yards. Yeah. If that guy get out of the way, I could see it. Now it looks like it's a first down. No, it is short, isn't it? Yeah, the official in the way. Carson trying to do his best job yeah, here. They're going to give him the first yeah, down. Yeah, a third of a ball by about a third, of, by about a stripe. Yeah, so the line to gain was a little bit in front of the 37. Of the 37 yeah. yeah. It's 37 and about three inches. But again, not that big of a deal. You know, they just have to you just start over. It's like turning pages in a book. All right, go back to the, go back to the, you know, next page. Another new set of downs here for the Falcons. First and 10 from the Uniota 37-yard line. Three men in the backfield per usual. Lamb under center. This time it'll oh, be a so run to the right side. Cross the 30-yard line. That's Chesser once again. He's pushed out of bounds by Matt Griffin and David Long. Again, had a chance to make a play at the line of scrimmage yep. and just Not couldn't finish the play. I mean, had both hands on him. Number 10, David Long. Second, and honestly, second either one or less than one here yeah. for Clinton Massey. Just under 11 minutes to go here in the second quarter. Elkins lined out, excuse me, lined up wide to the top of the screen. Another handoff, this time Hunter to the left side. He's got the first down and a bit more. Hunter, the ball carrier. Okay, again, next page. First and 10 from the Sherman 22. So Clinton just, Massey, you go ahead. No, I was going to say, I'm just looking at the way that Union is choosing to defend this, and I think in order to be more effective, you're going to have to position Griffin where he can make more of a play. Because I, I've kind of started to notice, although that was played pretty well. Yep, good, good. I don't want our two yard gain there for Clinton Massey. What you I think what you're seeing is, is they're, they know they have a numbers away from Griffin. So watch and see if they're, I just noticed the last three or four plays have been away from Griffin and where Griffin's kind of lining up almost like a half safety but really he's a level two guy so the winner of tonight's matchup will play the winner of Urbana and St. Paris Graham okay if I'm right again here they should they should run this to the guy with the red flag this way same formation here for Clint Massey here's a toss to the right side I believe that's Chesser once again is that Perkins Who, who's 14 that is Ethan Summer. Well, he made a nice play, but he came close to missing that play, too. But again, here we are, third and about six. And, and a chance here we go. To, yeah. You're going to hold them to chance to one, two, or less. Yeah. And get them. They, they haven't been, they haven't been in that, that situation yet where they needed fourth and three. Third and six on the scoreboard, however, if you look at the chains, looks almost even third uh, and five here. What are they saying over there? Six, yeah, it's five. Two receivers See, set that here pulls for Clinton Gri Massey. That pulls Griffin away. Yeah, going to be a handoff right up the middle. That's Brody Clutter who's got the first down and across the 10-yard line. Another flag Number on five, the play. The He's signaling face mask, and that's where I see there's a lot of hands up around his head. Right Don't play. see Clinton Massey go to a two-receiver set too often. No, they did that to pull. I'm telling you, they did that to pull Griffin away. It'll be a face mask on the Shermans. I believe at that point it would be half the distance regardless to of the goal. 15 or 5, yeah. So that'll put it just inside the five-yard line here with 9.04 to go in the first half. Clinton Massey goal. looking to punch it in for their second score of the night. Lamb will come out under center. 
It is Hunter, Chesser, and Clutter in the backfield. It'll be Hunter on the carry to the left side, and he punches it in. Well, maybe not. Close. And he is in for the Clinton Massey touchdown. That puts them ahead 13 to nothing here in the opening half. Well, granted they scored. But, but you and Yoda did do a better job of defending yep. them that time. You know, for you, and, you know, you just kind of got to get rid of the big play. You know, first or second play of scrimmage, yeah. Chesser yeah. breaks it out from his own 30 to yeah. more or less the other 40 or 35. But these guys are like little robots. They just line up like electric football men. They just smack you. The point after from McGinnis is good. And that'll put Clint Massey out to a 14 to nothing lead over Uniota. We'll take a quick break. You're watching Ohio High School Football right here on Southern Ohio Sports Authority, presented by Ohio Health. Michelle and her dad. Decades of dares. One month of learning to jump. First day doing it solo. And two years since starting cancer treatment at Ohio Health. This broadcast is brought to you in part by Willie and Son Trucking. Willie and Son Trucking has been a proud supporter of local student athletes, coaches, and athletic programs throughout its history. Be sure to look out for the Shack Athlete of the Week presented by Willie and Son Trucking each week at SosaOhio.com. Five-yard rushing touchdown from Gavin Hunter capped off about a 70-yard drive from the Clinton Massey offense. McGinnis boots it away once again, fakes the reverse here, does Griffin, and he's got a little bit of room to the left side, beats a guy to the corner, and he'll be pushed out of bounds right around the 45-yard line. Another solid return by Griffin. He's pushed out of bounds by Miles Thiege. Again, I didn't get the number here, but someone really got him a nice block here at about the 25-yard well, line. You know, a lot of them fell for the fake reverse. I a little mean, bit. It, it held him. For sure right. it held him. So Junior Newton first Hoops and the Union to offense will come back out, still looking for their first score of the contest. Come out in the pistol, Corbin DeMint. Directly behind him, a three-receiver stack to the right side, which is where Hoops is looking. Pocket starts to collapse. Good job by Hoops oh, to got, get out of it. Oh, he's got Dre. He's got Dre. And he'll throw oh. it away to the right side. Like you said, looking for Dre to the right side. Had him early. Hoops able to get out of the pocket and avoid the sack there. Well, he did a nice job stepping up, getting under the pressure and extending the play. But I, honestly, his receivers didn't react very well to his scrambling. So still... 10 yards to go here now. Second down from their own 45-yard line. 8.24 to go here in the second quarter. Now see, they've got Maddox and Blake down here into the boundary. Hoops back to pass. Under a bit of pressure once Blake again. Rolling out to the right side. Goes back. Throws it all the way to the other side of the field, looking for his brother, Blake Hoops. It'll be over his head. So once again, avoids the sack, although another incomplete pass that'll bring up a third down and 10. I'm not sure he makes the uh, We got a flag back here around the 25-yard line, kind of towards the right hash. They didn't do anything. Yeah, as of now, it looks like they're just going to wave it off. Must have maybe maybe threw it for grounding and then oh, re no, realized pass, yeah. and realized hoops was in the area. I actually think Newton. I don't know if he could have made a first down, but he would have. It looked made like a he had a little bit run. of. Yeah, it looked yeah. like he had a little bit he of. He makes five run. or six yards anyway. 
So third and 10 here for Yota Hoops, rolls out to his right, looking to pass once again, gets it downfield, he's got Dre, looks like he's got enough for the first down. He absolutely does, great, great, great throw. They use Dre in that wing back roll, gets a ton of carries, but also a pretty solid receiver. That's his 11th catch on the year, and that'll put him to right around. Oh, the oh, what are we doing? It, it, the guy missed the mark. The guy missed the mark by a yard and a half. I'm like, what are we doing? So that'll get them to that'll get Dre to 11 catches, about a buck 65 now. I can tell you, as a as a former wide receiver, when you turn and you're running, and that ball's going to hit you right in the teeth. That was a good throw I, by Hoops. No, I can tell you what an appreciation you have for having a ball because you can do anything you want with that ball. You're not going to get hit. You're going to get that ball caught with both hands away from your body, tuck it, and, and, and even be able to make a move. Now, actually pretty good coverage. I mean, he, he didn't make probably, matter of fact, he it probably like, went backwards right. a yard after he caught it, but a great throw, great throw. It's a new set of downs here for Yota this time. On the Clinton Massey, 44-yard line. Moving the ball really well the first drive. Just stalled out there on the fourth and one. This time to they the left side. Going to be they Holt Newkirchner on edge. the carry across the 40. He's got some room to the left side, and he'll eventually be brought down by a host of Falcons. It's like Miles Stege and Gavin Hunter on the tackle for Clinton Massey. You know, you look at a guy like Newkirchner, doesn't get a whole lot of carries. Makes good use of the one he got there. Now, I don't want to sound stupid. About an 18-yard carry. But you need to manage this clock a little bit. Well, you know, with Clinton Massey's, I mean, I know you want to score, right. but you don't want to leave. I would say leaving. Five minutes on there. Well, I'd say anything less than four. I would say anything take. less than five, to be honest. <laughs> yeah. Hoops looking to pass once again, rolls out to his right. Got this time again. down the field, got Dollison across the 10 yard line. Another great throw. I mean, a great throw. Dollison, another guy, not a whole lot of receptions on the season. Makes good use of his one there. Another first down for Unyota. First and goal for Unyota on the nine yard line. And remember now, Unyota gonna receive the second half kickoff. That's what I'm saying. I'm trying to get a two for one here, but you leave. Six minutes on that clock. And I you're tell you, they turned it. the play clocks off. They were originally First on. Why did they turn them off? I don't know. They've been on up to this point, but they are no longer on. Obviously, officials on the field keep their own, but it's always nice to be able to oh, have sure. a reference to look at. You know, what's the point of buying them if we're not going to turn them on? But they were on, so I don't yeah, know. I don't you know, know what exactly happened. Either way, first. And oh, goal here. Looks like we're going to have false start here for Unyota. But you know what? Really? You lose five yards, but you probably gain 20 or 30 seconds. And I'm telling you, that can be big. So the false start pushes Unyota back five now, right around the Falcon 14 yard line. You see who's coming in here. Now you bring it in, Griffin. Looks like Tuttle was coming in as well. No, Griffin and Tuttle. New Kirshner and Dement come out. That's a luxury. I can tell you that's a luxury. Well, and, and, you know, you look around the league, you look at teams like Zane Trace who have three or four guys they can run the ball with as well. You know, when you have a really good running back room and you can have, you know, a run by committee offense, you know, it keeps guys fresh. Nobody on the roof. Hoops rolls out to the left side. Looks like he's got Tuttle, but just under too much pressure. Looks like Nolan Phipps. Got in the face of hoops. That's the only true freshman that plays that starts on either side of the ball for Clint Massey. A lot of juniors, a lot of seniors, couple sophomores. Well, they 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 played that straight man, and you go straight man. You got to find uh, you got to find Fox, and you got to find Blake, and they got to win. One of those two guys got to win that battle. But then again, uh, Newton did not have his feet under him to make that throw. But really, I'm not too sure Tuttle was was open enough to get him the ball. I think that was about a half a throw away. Is that Tuttle down here? Play clock winding down here. You know they able to get it off. Hoops under a bit of pressure. Going to roll out to his left once again. Looking to the end zone. He's got Fox, although it's batted down. That's number 10, Miles Thiege coming up with the deflection. A big time play by the junior. Sets up a third down and 15, or excuse me, a third down and goal from the 14. I'm not saying anything or trying to be funny, but I just saw the best throw of the night. 
Did you see Fox throw that ball back to the official? No, I wasn't paying attention. It was a strike, dude. So third and 14 for Uniota. Well, now you're in a half to pass situation. Brings up third and, goal. and I'm not too sure. Last time they were in this situation, they ran Blake and Maddox into the boundary together. So we got Fox coming in. They got him going to opposite sides. They got him in tight, which is not, that's, that's a good move. It leaves a lot, a lot of space to the outside. Pistol formation for the Sherman's hoops. Back to pass under pressure. That's Rodman. Oh, and he'll come up with the big time sack for Clinton Massey right around the 37 yard line. About a 23 yard sack. Well, that cost him three points for sure. Sack is made by number nine, Brighton Rodman. Brighton Rodman coming up with the sack for Clinton Massey. Sets up fourth and fourth and goal, but about fourth and 35 here for Uniota. Brings out fourth and goal. You know, I'd say we'd see a pun here, although punter no. Andrew Griffin not out on the field. Clinton Massey kind of running a prevent here. Four guys stretched across the 15-yard line. Well, the problem is, 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 is really uh, Newton has been harassed. Last couple plays. Well, he's been rasped almost every time he's tried to throw. And this time picked off by the Falcons. That's Rodman coming up with the interception. He gets the sack on third down and gets the interception on fourth. A big time interception from the junior. And that'll set up the Falcon offense on their own 40 yard line. Just couldn't get it over top of the big D end. Well, Tips it around, saw, comes up with it. Coming, too, yeah, probably a hook and ladder, I'm yeah. guessing, or hook and yeah. ladder was probably on the way because obviously it was being thrown to the underneath route. Right. I didn't see if there was a back swinging out of the backfield, but I'd say if we went and rewatched that through, there most likely was. Absolutely was. So first and 10 from their own 40. Keegan Lamb looking to lead this Falcon offense down the field for another score. It is an absolute must not to go down three scores. Back to pass, don't see this too often. Wide open down the field is Rodman, although he can't come up with it. Gets the interception. And the leading Falcon receiver can't come up with the catch. Could have been a touchdown there, wide open down the field. You know, we talked, we say, you know, this is a team that only attempts one or two passes a game. And, you know, typically when they complete them, they're big gains because, you know, as we see, they're not, not too used to seeing Clint Massey throw the football. Well, and I, I you know, the, the, again, they can do that because they're up 14 to nothing. But now they are. This is the first second time and they've ten. had. Yeah. yeah. Second and ten's a little tough. Brings up second and ten. Now what they need is a, you know, short gain here and get them in a third and seven or eight. Oh, well, crap. Straight ahead, it's going to be number six. That's Logan Chester down the sideline. You can forget about it. A 60-yard touchdown for Logan Chesser. Number six. Chester Again, just a simple Falcon isolation here. play. Beats the level two guy to the outside and just outruns everybody. Just too much space, too, too well blocked, too well executed. A 20 to nothing first half lead for the Falcons. Ian McGinnis on for the point after. Caden Zantine, the holder, long snapper, senior Adam Frisch. And that connection able to put one through the uprights. A 21 to nothing lead for Clint Massey. We'll step aside for a quick break. You're watching Ohio High School football right here on Southern Ohio Sports Authority, presented by Ohio Health. Harlem's first time setting foot inside a tattoo shop. Second picture his daughter has posted to her story. Third check on his bucket list. And four years of cancer-free checkups at Ohio Health. If there's not a Parmar store near you now, there will be soon. That's the slogan, and that's what we believe at Parmar stores. From groceries to gas and all the other stuff you need, Parmar has it. 
Download the Parmar app for even more savings. And don't forget the Parmar Rewards Card, too. We also believe in being a big part of your community, so look for us at the ball game or wherever you are. Shop us today. Like us on Facebook, Instagram. We welcome you back in here to Yoda High School, a 60-yard rushing touchdown from Logan Chester and another really long kick for me and McGinnis. This time the Falcons kickoff team with great coverage. Griffin not able to get much going there, brought down around his own 11. We've seen him return it to, I believe, last time around the 45. The time before was around the 35. This time, not as lucky. Union will start around around their own 12. Uh, you, you know, you got five minutes. You have all three timeouts. If Unioda can maybe piece together a quick drive here, go down and score, you get the ball to start the second yeah. half. No, most of most of Unioda's drives for scores throughout the season have been less than five minutes. There's no reason to pa push the panic button because why? You can get a two for one here, and then all of a sudden it's a 21 to 14 game, and now now you're just a, a possession away from really getting back in the game. You just have to do what you have to do. Here's a handoff to the left side. That's DeMint, who's brought down immediately as he tries to cut it up. It's Gabe McDowell on the tackle for Clint Massey. About a yard gained on the play from DeMint. It'll bring up a second and nine. I actually think that they, they, they had the edge blocked pretty well. Again, it, you know, it's easy to see that from up here. But one on the play makes it second and nine. Just under five minutes to go here in the second quarter. Got two wings here for Unyota. Hoops in the pistol. He's looking to pass, going straight to Fox. Runs a bit of a curl route to the left side. Breaks away from the defender, and he's pushed out of bounds. Around the 40-yard line by number 22, Tristan Trampler. Again, and they're, they're sort of giving that. Yeah. I don't think they'll give it again anytime soon, but they were laying back. By number 22, good, uh, good route, good catch, uh, great effort after the catch. Gainer 26 on the play, first down, Sherman. 26-yard hookup there from Hoops to Fox. Gets you Yoda right at their own 40-yard line. Same formation here, although Griffin now behind Hoops, who looks to pass once again, going deep down the field. He's got Blake Hoops, who dives just a bit overthrown. Hoops had a bit of a step on him to the outside, although that would have taken more or less a perfect throw from Newton Hoops there. He did have a half a step on him, and about a hand too yeah, long. C.J. Stroud might be able to make that throw. But here's what I'm saying. I'm, I, I know the play has purpose because it backs them up a little bit. And really what they should come to right back and do is they should be able to, you know, something in the 8, 10-yard range ought to be open now. But again, there's no great need to have to throw. I mean, second down now there is a little bit, but I'm saying they're still in great shape. Second down and 10. Fox was by himself to the right side. Going across the middle, oh, he's, he's got, got hoops across the 50-yard line. A ton of room after the catch here. A good block from Fox on the right side. Still on his feet and eventually stepping out of bounds around the 27-yard line. You know, he, he obviously coming from left to right there is hoops. He looked to the right side. Fox, a pretty solid block that allowed hoops to get maybe six, seven, eight more yards after the catch. Yeah. Good hookup there for Uniota. I mean, and the way the way that you do beat man coverage is getting across the field, which you know that little, whatever you want to call that, a drag up or or a cross, More of a drag or five yeah. yard in, kind of coming I mean, across the line of scrimmage. I mean, that, that, that's really sometimes something that you have to work on a lot to, to be able to make that throw. But absolutely, perfect pass to Blake and, and a good run after the catch. But again, no great need to have to throw the ball here. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Three, four Over yards. Dawson, the ball carrier. Who? Tackle made by number eight, Hunter. It's about a second down and eight here for Unyota after and the carry. Not a hundred percent sure. I didn't get a number, but just by looking at a Unyota player walking off the field, looked like Casey Dre was in an arm sleeve. Walking towards the locker room, not 100% sure, so that's not exactly official, although I'd say it was about a 60-40 chance that it was. It was a towel kind of around his back, so I couldn't get a number. 
So a timeout here from you and Yoda. If that was Dre, would well, be a we pretty big loss. Yeah, we, I, I we haven't, haven't seen him, him really since the first drive, although yeah. we've seen him take a Carried lot of sweeps. Twice. Had a big yeah. time conversion. Uh, it was about a 15 yard grab. Uh, yeah, the possession did. later, and really yeah, for Union Yoda, you know, we've talked about it, been that hybrid guy. You know what? He got tackled pretty hard on that cat, that ball that he caught. That might have happened then. And that sling deal, you think that might mean his arm, but it might. it's more than likely Shoulder, collarbone. collarbone yeah. yeah. So 341 to go. Excuse me, they just corrected it to 344 to go here in the second quarter. Second down and eight from the Clinton Massey 28-yard line. You know, Union Yoda... All three drives done a pretty good job moving the ball down the field. But it's they just haven't you, finished. Right, you get it. They've gotten inside the thirty. Even last time, got inside the ten Damn. yard line, and you know after that, just haven't been able to punch it in. No. But still, aren't in bad shape if they can get a score here with very to little no time on the clock, and then get the second half kickoff. Fox and hoops. To the bottom of the screen here. Looks like New Kirshner towards the top. Hoops. Back to pass. Looking over the middle. And just a bit over top of his receiver, Fox. Thiege in coverage. And he'll bring up a third and eight. You know, and the bottom line is, is none of it's going to make any ma difference unless they make Massey punt a few times in right. the second half. Because they'll just squeeze the life out of you. It's like guy having you in a figure four leg lock. I mean, he's just going to squeeze you till, you till you submit. It's a third down and eight. Clearly four down territory here for you, Yoda. So you really don't have to get it all on this play, no. although shortening it up to at least fourth and three would definitely be nice for you, Yoda. Looks like we're going to have a two receiver stack here towards the bottom of the screen. Speaking of screen, that's what it is to Fox, who gets across the 25-yard line. You'll need about four. Yeah, going to bring up about a fourth and five. Yeah, use Dollison kind of as a blocker to the left side. Able to pick up two or three yards on the play, but about a fourth and four here for Uniota. Well, now a, a hitch or a speed out can get you the first down. And you really don't have a lot to have to protect. To run a you know a three step or a quick a quick route here. Fox and hoops on opposite sides of the oh, ball here. Fox. Dollison in Fox motion. On the slant. Oh, there it is. Yeah, looking for Fox on the slant. Not able to hook up. Thiege, I believe, may have caught a piece of it, or at least he was in coverage. It'll be another turnover on downs for Yunyota. Once again, the tanks able to get inside the 30 yard line, but just. You know, kind of stalling out after that, not able to, you know, obviously they're not exactly a red zone offense, but. Well, let's see what happens here, although I'm not sure it makes a whole lot of difference, but can they score in two minutes and 52 seconds? Well, you got 252. You have all three timeouts. We've seen them bust off a couple big time But maybe we plays. can get them in something and maybe turn them over. Same formation here for Clinton Massey to the left side. Looks hey, looky like here, looky here. It was Gavin Hunter on the carry. Uh, maybe not. I they don't think he gained anything. If anything, he lost a half a yard. And Massey called timeout. That's not a smart timeout if you're Massey. So Clinton Massey going to take their first timeout of the half. I believe it was Hunter on the carry there for the Falcons. Lost about a half yard on the play. Brings up a second and 10 for Yunyota. That's really a down in distance. We've only seen one time on an in this game. Pass. It was the one yeah. pass attempt they had. <laughs> and really, it, it should have been, a, right. really been about a 40-yard pickup for Clint yep. Massey. Yep. I, I, you know, I guess I shouldn't criticize the Massey coaching staff for calling the timeout. They obviously feel they like have three they have a scoring opportunity. Yep. But I'm saying, you know, sometimes you can outthink yourself. And, and of course, I'm doing their thinking for them. I would be more than happy to let this clock tick out right. with Union to not touching the ball and going in at halftime 21 nothing. You know, l l let's see what they – let's see how – they know their kids better well, than I do. Right, and, you know, the only thing I would say about that timeout is now, 
you know, if you only pick up one or two yards here, now you know to probably going to no, start absolutely. calling timeouts. And, and before, that wasn't even an issue. You know, that obviously they only have two, but when you take your own timeout on first down, that, you know, sets it up Correct. a little better for you. Correct. That's, so really my whole, that's my whole Clint problem. Clint Massey going to, in reality, going to want to pick up, you know, I think I would say anything under six yards, well, Yoda probably way. takes a timeout. If this, if this is a no-gain play, the next timeout's called by Yoda. Right. Yep. It's the same formation here for the Falcons. Lamb under center. It looks like straight up the gut here with About clutter. Six, five or six. Yeah, I'd let that go if I was Number Junior. Five. I'd Run save that. I sure would be calling it if you get a stop here on third down. Again, this is only what maybe the third time we've had him in anywhere near yeah, about three, four yards. Third and three yeah. here, yep. And in, and in their territory, too. You know, uh, uh, anything less than a first down here uh, should be a timeout, Unyota. And going to be cluttered to the left ah, side. He's got geez. it across the 35-yard line, and he's got the first down for Clinton Massey. You know, I could understand if that kid was about 6'2", 220, but that kid's about 5'11", no, you know, and about 165 pounds. He's I'll not tell you, very is that big. 5'11", 195. Nah, he don't weigh no 195. Nah, that's what it is on the book. Here's a toss to the right side. That's Chesser, who gets across the 40, makes a man miss before eventually being brought down by Marcel James, a defensive tackle, a sophomore for Unyota. But not before Chesser picks up about six yards on the play. Chesser, so far tonight, had a really good game. Once again, straight up the gut with Brody Clutter. It's not a first down, so the clock will keep ticking. Yeah, about third down and one or two here for Clinton Massey. But I'm saying by the time they snap this ball, it'll be under a minute. So this is where if you get, oh, they call it that. Yeah, Clinton Massey going to take a timeout with. I mean, that makes sense to me right there. 106 to go here in the first half of tonight's Division Four round one playoff matchup between the Unyota Sherman Tanks and the defending state champs, the Clinton Massey Falcons, a 21 to nothing lead for the Falcons. I believe their last score was the 60 yard rushing touchdown by Chesser. Before that, I believe McDowell and Hunter both had one apiece. And yeah, we've already highlighted you know, how great of a kicker Ian McGinnis looks. You know, we talked not only on the kickoffs, but even on the PATs, kicking it a couple lanes deep into the track. He's good all day long from 40, 45. He's good. I mean, that kid's a good and, kicker. You know, He's earlier a, in the game, when we were thinking it might be a fourth a fourth down in the red zone for Clint Massey, we said, well, we don't know what the kicking situation is for the Falcons. Well, I think, you know, now we know if it's fourth and five, fourth and six in the red zone, Clint Massey, more than likely capable of putting one through for three. Out in my mind. Two receivers set here for Massey. I formation straight ahead with Clutter. And he's across the 50 yard line five, for another Clinton Massey there. first down. Falcons still That's holding on to a timeout, obviously not going to use it here. So they get the stoppage of the clock. This might be a throw. As they move the sticks, going to be Clutter. One. No, this time Lamb going to keep it to the left side, a ton of room before being forced out of bounds by Caden Cotwright. And we talked last week, Jack Elkins stepped in for the injured Lamb, did not have a carry, did not have a pass. Something the Falcons missed a lot. This time they get Lamb back. His first carry of the, game of the day goes for right around 15 yards. Move the chains for Clinton Massey. Still, but here, because they don't run on the line, although they did run a play back a couple of plays ago on the line. Anything less than a first down run here causes them problems. So anything less than a 10 yard run here is a problem. Oh Straight my. ahead with Clutter once again across the 20, cuts it back. Is eventually brought down by Isaiah Cunningham. Another first down for the Falcons, just moving the ball on down the field inside the 15 yard line. Going to hurry up here, 43 seconds to go. Still have a timeout. 
And they'll clock it on first down. That'll stop the clock at about 40 and a half seconds here. Now you know when you're clocking the ball on first down and you're going to run the ball, that's a lot of confidence right We there, don't know boy. if they're going to run the ball. They're we could, running the ball. We could see another we pass attempt. Got that attempt. timeout. Nah, I'm not seeing it. Keegan Lamb may be going for his fourth passing touchdown on the season. Three touchdowns to three interceptions. Ten for, well now ten for 30 for 212 yards. 73 carries for 408. That was through last week, so that's not including the carry here tonight. Two receivers to the top of the screen. I formation. They're going to motion out. Chesser and looking over the middle. I believe that was Brighton Rodman they were looking for over the middle. Almost had him for the touchdown. So it looked like maybe Cody Tuttle got a hand on it for the Shermans. Uh, it was uh, 10. That would be David Long. Yeah, and he, they're lucky he didn't pick that off because he had a good, long, heavy paw on that thing. So third down and 10 for the Falcons. Here's a toss to the right side. That's Chesser looking for some room. He'll eventually be pushed out of bounds at the 10-yard line. I That's Matt I, Griffin I really coming up with the tackle. They'll, I think they'll kick a field goal here. I really they do. go up four scores if you do. About a fourth down and five or six here. Looks like McGinnis going to come on for the... Do we have a great view of it or what? What do you mean? So that, no, I'm saying we got a great angle of this. Uh, 28 yards. This kid's got this in his, he's got this left footed. Number 13 again is on to kick the field goal. Caden Zantine on to hold the field goal attempt here. Looks like Yoda going to do their best attempt here. Timeout Sherman to Ice McGinnis, perfect tonight, three for three on PAT tries. Gonna look to put one through here for three. Well, there's no question the kid has the leg for it. Uh, just a couple scores around the area that I know of now. I know at one point London was up over Chillicothe 21 to nothing. And, you know, obviously we know the Jackson game, well now it is 28 to 6 in favor of London. The Jackson Miami Trace game 37 to nothing. That game at Jackson. Here at Unioda, 29, a 21 to nothing lead for the Falcons. McGinnis looking to make it 24. Zantine gets the hold down oh and the kick is right through the uprights. So four for four kicking tonight is Ian McGinnis. Video game. That looked pretty. Yeah, that was good for at least maybe 20 more. Nah, it's good 15 or 18 more. But you know on, on NFL games now, I believe it's only primetime games, they'll show you how far it would have been good from oh, really? after the kick. So it might only be a 50 yarder, but you know, once it goes through, they might say good for, you know, good from 61 or Kinda good from like 62. The, the home run thing. Right, you know, the ball only goes 300 feet, but it's a home run. You know, it yeah. would have went 400. So McGinnis going to look to boot this one away here with 26.9 seconds left here in the second quarter. Fox and Griffin. The two men back deep for Yoda. Another great looking kick from McGinnis. Griffin getting it around his own two yard line. He'll take it to the left side. Trying to cut it up and brought down around the 17, maybe 16 yard line. Another good job for the Clinton Massey kickoff team. To keep Griffin inside the 20-yard line on back-to-back -back kickoffs, the two prior, you know, more or less got past the 35 both times. So you know, to only one timeout, 20 seconds to go. Wouldn't expect much else than a kneel here. 
Although and you can always hand it off yeah. here to a running back and you know maybe bust it out for you know 50 or 60 yards here. Going to be Dement to the right side, trying to cut it back. He's got a bit of room, although he's eventually brought down. What a six or seven yard carry. Number 34, Dement, the ball carrier. Tackle by number nine, Rodman. Look like Rodman coming up on the tackle once again for the Falcons. Rodman, been a busy guy so far tonight. Had had the interception, almost had a touchdown, been targeted twice. But that will bring us to the end of the first half here at Uniota High School. We'll take a quick break. And we'll be back for the start of the second half. Clint Massey out in front, 24 to nothing over Uniota. Michelle and her dad. Decades of dares. One month of learning to jump. First day doing it solo. And two years since starting cancer treatment at Ohio Health. This broadcast is brought to you in part by Willie and Son Trucking. Willie and Son Trucking has been a proud supporter of local student athletes, coaches, and athletic programs throughout its history. Be sure to look out for the Shack Athlete of the Week presented by Willie and Son Trucking each week at SosaOhio.com. All aboard! Welcome the Clinton Massey Marching Band to the field. Tonight is a special night as the Marching Band is proud to premiere their new uniforms for the first time. The Marching Band is led onto the field by Senior Field Commander Connor Powers and Assistant Gabe Rager. Tonight, they will be performing their OMEA state qualifying show titled Off the Rails. The show features senior saxophone Luke Goodwin. Please enjoy the show.
and gentlemen, please welcome the Indiana High School Marching Sermon under the direction of Ms. Colleen Coyne, assisted by Mr. Jonathan Thorne and Colleen Ryan Instructor, Mrs. Maureen Simon. The 2022 field commander is Mitchell Barnes and the dance commander is Olivia Breidenbaugh. Tonight, our show honors our seniors with music they have chosen. First up is Indy Pop Band Fits and the Chancellor's Hits, 6 a.m., arranged by Mitchell Barnes. Our second song is a hit by Tyler the Creator. Sometimes you have to close the door to open a window. We are magicians, but we hope you enjoy New Magic Wand. We'll conclude our performance with a special feature for our seniors and percussionists. Watch them switch it up with Come With Me Now by the Congos.
and a big round of applause for your Miliano Marcus Sherman. We do have some halftime scores of interest. At the half, Paint Valley 21, Huntington 0. At the half, St. Grace 40, Clark Montessori 0. At the half, Cincinnati, Wyoming 30, Waverly 0. At the half, London 28, Chillicothe 6. At the half, Wapakoneta 14, Wilmington 0. Also at the half, Western Brown 19, Mount Healthy 6. Dana Gilliland, please come to the press box. Dana Gilliland, please come to the press box. If you found a set of car keys, please turn them into the concession stand. If you found any car keys, please turn them into the concession stand. We welcome you back in here to Yoda High School. We're just 
a few seconds away from kickoff here in the second half of tonight's Division Four Round One playoff matchup between the Clinton Massey Falcons and the Yoon Yoda Sherman Tanks. Hi, everybody. I'm Dewey Daly. My dad, Tim Daly, is tagging along with me for the second half. Yoon Yoda set to receive the opening kickoff here in the second half. You know, Yoon Yoda done a pretty good job moving the ball down the field. We've talked about it, but just haven't been able to punch it in once they get down around the end zone. You know, they've got into the red zone a couple times. The one time they got it inside the 10, but just well, haven't been able to punch it well in. Let's, let's face it, in, in reality, if if what Yoon had has done throughout the season, of course that doesn't count today, at worst, this is probably a 21 to 14 game with Union to getting the ball back here, but that's not the case. They haven't made plays when they when they needed to be made, and, and that's why we're in a 24 to nothing hole. Fox and Griffin back deep. Looks like they're almost targeting Griffin on the kickoff. This time he'll give it to Fox on the end around, but Clinton Massey all over it, almost expecting it. He'll be pushed out of bounds just short of the 20-yard line which is where Newton Hoops and the Union to offense going to look to get something going here. Well, I think you have to. I, I don't think you can watch the scoreboard. I think you got to do what you got to do. I don't think you have to be in a, you know, it's not urgent. I think you just go right back to the game plan and the things that you figured would be successful coming into this game and go back to them and start over. We've seen you, Yoda, hook up on some big pass plays, a lot of crossing routes. We've seen him go to Fox a couple times, hooked up with Dollison. Dre and Hoops, all three one apiece. This time going to be DeMint straight ahead. They'll Good get solid about, run. Yeah, about three or four yards on the play for Number Corbin three, DeMint. Well, I can tell you the play wasn't blocked that extremely was well. That was just a Bro. simple case of moving the pile. Yeah, a little bit more than three That's or four yards. Looks play. like it was five. Going to bring up five. second down and five here for Yoon Yoda. Like hoops at the top of the screen. Fox all by himself with Miles Stege here on the bottom. Pistol here for Yoon Yoda going to be Tuttle to the left side across the 20-yard line, but eventually pushed out of bounds by number 21, Peyton Brewer. Driven out of bounds by number 22, Crampler. Again, that time what we would call spill the play. They just kind of kept riding the play, riding the play, riding the play, and eventually you spill it into the sideline. And, you know, Tuttle not being an extremely explosive running back, he wasn't able to get his shoulders turned square to the line of scrimmage. They just forced him out of bounds for a very short gain. Yeah, about a one-yard gain there for Cody Tuttle. Third down and four. Griffin, nice run there from Griffin, able to cut it back up. You know, it kind of looked like maybe he was headed to the outside towards the boundary, but just stuck his foot in the ground and... Cut it up field and gets the first down for Yoon Yoda. Well, what he saw was he saw daylight, and he, and he was down in distance. He knew he needed four, and he absolutely made the right cut first down-wise. Now, if he was looking for a bigger play, he could have been a little bit more patient. But, I, you know, again, uh, good first solid football play. First and ten from their own 30. Hoops in the pistol. Hoops back to pass under a bit of pressure looking Downfield looked like he was looking for Dement. It'll fall incomplete. Looked like Nolan Phipps was in the backfield there, four, McDowell, putting pressure on Hoops to bring up a second and ten. Well, he knocked him on the ground, and I mean, I think two afterwards, uh, Newton was trying to get a call. Uh, not a very well thrown ball. Uh, would have been minimal gain regardless. Second down and 10 from their own 30. Same formation here for Yoon Yoda. Dollison goes in motion. Looks like it's going to be Tuttle straight ahead. A nice run by Cody Tuttle. About six or seven Tuttle yards on there. the play for the senior. Sets up a third and short here for Yoon Yoda. In kind of a little bit of a delayed trap draw. And pretty well blocked and, and a nice run and a five or six yard gain. And just put Dollison in motion going towards the field, faked a handoff, and just had Tuttle going straight ahead. The third and two officially 
pretty long two here for Union. An eight yard <laughs> gain for half. Tuttle. Yeah. Same formation here for the Shermans. Hoops drops back to pass, looking to the right side, tipped in the air. And it'll fall incomplete. Looked like he was looking to hook up with Fox on the outside. Tipped at the line of scrimmage, brings up a fourth, oh we'll say my. three. Defended by number 35, Nolan Stephens. He's gonna go for it. Fox was open. Yep. For sure he was open. And I didn't, did number nine tip that ball? And somebody Looked was like locked it. up with him too, so yeah, Rodman, really pretty good play by number nine. Yeah, if it was Rodman that got a hand on it, he's had a big game on both sides of the ball here. Pistol formation, hoops, drops back to pass, looking over the middle. And he's hooking up with Blake Hoops, although looks like he may have just got back to the line of scrimmage. There is a flag after the play. Newton Hoops passes complete to Blake Hoops. I'm pretty sure that was the play they ran earlier. Yeah, it had a, about a, yeah, had about a 30 yard gain on it that time. Although that time, you know, Hoops makes the grab right at the line of scrimmage. I think that's maybe a route you want to run at the sticks. And we'll have an unsportsmanlike conduct on you, Yoda, obviously fourth down. So would that be enforced after the play? So 15 yards towards the end zone for Clint Massey? Yes. So another turnover on downs for you, Yoda. They've been faced with, I think, three fourth and shorts now, and they just haven't been able to convert that time. About a fourth and three. So Clint Massey now... One yard out of the red zone here on about the 20 and a half yard line of Uniota. First and 10 Falcons from the Sherman 21. Three men in the backfield under center is Lamb handing it off straight ahead. A good stop there by the defensive line of Uniota. Number six, Chester. The that was Logan carrier. Chesser on the carry. We've been calling his name a couple times. Had a Couple big runs, had a 60-yard rushing touchdown for the Falcons in the first half. This time, about a yard loss there. Actually, they're going to give him a, 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 gave him a yard. I, that's kind of surprising to me. It looked like, if anything, he may have lost a yard. So second down and nine here for the Falcons. Lamb uh -oh. going to hand it off. That's Hunter to the left side. And he's got just enough for the first down. Looks no, like no, no. I think, he, I think he, they had him down. He rolled up. Okay. About three. Needs about three. So about a third down and like you said, three. Maybe a long three or two here for Clint Massey. Thought he had about six more yards than that, but must have just rolled up and kind of rolled for the first down. Brings up third and three. So third down, three yards to go for Clint Massey. Going to be Hunter once again. He's got the first down this time and is taken down by a host of Shermans right around the five-yard line. There is a flag on the play. So as of now, face mask. As of now, has the first down. Going to be a face mask on Nunez. That'll be half the distance. Put him right at the one-yard line. First and goal from the one yard line here for Clint Massey. Looking to make it a 30 to nothing game here with 8.20 to go in the third. And gonna be Hunter once again up the middle for the Falcon touchdown. A 30 to nothing lead for Clint Massey. That's Hunter's second rushing touchdown of the night. And that'll bring on Ian McGinnis for the point after. You know, when you start off on the other team's 20, you know, that's always extremely favorable field position, but you know, the 20 yards they did get, 
you know, hard fought and extremely efficient for Clinton Massey. Per usual, the kick from McGinnis splits the uprights. We have a 31 to nothing ball game here with 8-12 to go in the third. That ball just hit the edge of the track. I would say, obviously on PATs, you're not going to try to kick it as no, hard no, as you no, can. He might be able to kick it over the fence if he wanted to, over the back fence. That'd be deep, though. That'd be a hammer job. <laughs> so he could at least get four lanes back into the track. I'll give you that. Yeah, that's uh, extra points just like a, a four-foot putt. It ain't about power. It's about getting the thing online and just meeting the ball square. It's a feel, feel thing for sure. McGinnis kicking. So McGinnis Matt Griffin. Three, Matt set to Fox. kick off once again, per usual, Fox and Griffin. Back deep for you, Yoda. Going to the right side. He's That's trying to get it to Griffin. And it will go out of bounds. That'll put Unyota at the 35-yard line. Which, you know, you look at the first two possessions of Unyota, that's about the area that Griffin was returning it to initially. Hasn't had as much luck the past two or three times returning the football. So this time Unyota with a bit more favorable position when starting out their drive. Well, and again, you know, now we're looking at as soon as they spot the ball here, this clock's going to start winding and... You know, it's not the, the, obviously it's not the position that Unioda wanted to be in, but again, I would go back to the things that, that your game plan told you you could be successful at. And it's, it's no reason to panic and just, just play, play, play the way you wanted to play when the game started. A little bit of moving around here for Unioda Hoops in the pistol. Dollison going to get the carry this time, runs into... Really the back of his own guy and eventually brought down right around the line of scrimmage. Like number 23, Brandon Updike coming up with the tackle. Brighton Rodman Boy, they gave also in on it as well. Gave him a great spot. Yeah, I tell you what, they gave him a yard there. I, you know, kind of similar to the Chester run of possession ago. If anything, it looked like he may have lost a yard, but they're going to give him three feet here. Second down and nine from the 36. Tuttle in motion. He'll get it on the sweep. He sheds a tackle and is pushed out of bounds at the 42-yard line. So a pickup of five or six there for Tuttle will set up. Well, they're actually going to give him the 49-yard yeah, line. So He's about two. About third down and one here for Uniota. You know, once again, you know, minus their last possession, you know, to moving the ball down the field. It's, you know, just a matter of once you get into the red zone, are you going to be able to convert? Obviously still on their own 45 here. As Hoops back to pass under a bit of pressure, he tries to get rid of it. As of now, I think it's a fumble. Beanbag's on the ground. What it was was grounding, but they're not going to call it. Recovered by Gunnar Ward. One big change this year I've seen with officials ditched the blue bean bags. Now they're orange. Typically, wait, wait, wait. Why is he spotting the ball there? Where are you at? As of now, it's wait. It was third. It was wasn't it? Wasn't it was it third, third and two. one. Yeah, no, four, no, third was, and one. Right. They just lost five yards on an incomplete pass. What are we doing? Maybe looking at the wrong. They lost four yards. Line on the field. It was about, yeah, that's. Now they lost about a foot yeah. from where it was at before. Right. So fourth and one here. Got it back to the correct position here. Well, yeah, within a ball anyway. It'll be fourth down and one for Unyota. Who 
loops in the pistol here, puts Dollison in motion, straight ahead Griffin, he's got the first down across the 50 yard line. In a bit more, right around the 46, another good run for Matt Griffin, gets the first down. Looks like Brandon Updike a little slow to get up for Clinton Massey. And again, that's the first real time inside the tackles that Griffin's been able to run with his weight out over his toes and really look like a force. That's that's the kid that we've seen all year long and might be a little too little, not enough. How's the saying go? First too little, too late. A pass to the left side here, looking for Tuttle. He's got it, and Tuttle knocked out of bounds. By number 35, Phipps, Nolan Phipps, another time we've seen the only freshman starter for either team making a tackle here, but not before Tuttle picks up about seven yards for Uniota. We only had about three guys downfield, too. Not a very wet, not a very good looking play. A gain of six on the play. Brings up second and four. Officially a gain of six, so second down and four. For Uniota, DeMint in the backfield alongside Hoops. They got away with a bit of a false start there. Hoops looking downfield, hooks up with Dollison, and that's just enough for another Uniota first down. Another new set of downs for Uniota. You know, first down, first down, first down here so far on this drive for the Shermans. Three forty-five to go here in this Division Four Round One playoff matchup between the Clinton Massey Falcons and the Uniota Sherman Tanks. Three thirty to go. Straight ahead, looks like Griffin once again <laughs> across the thirty-yard line. A nice, powerful run from Matt Griffin. He's got about six or seven on the play. It'll bring up a second and short. Yeah, again, you know, old school football player, all he's trying to do is trade paint with people. That kid can play for me anytime. And he probably, I'm promising you, in his mind, he knows this is his last giddy up. He ain't going to take any of it to the locker room with him. Second down and three, DeMint back in the game for Uniota. Dallison in motion. It'll be DeMint, the ball carrier. Maybe a yard or two on the play. Looks like he'll come up just a bit short of the first down. Tackle made by number eight, Hunter. And 55 quick. So either the ball mark, the ball is spotted wrong or the chain gang guy needs to scoot over about two yards because no, we're not well, on the same it's page right here. On the, no, it's right on the line. I mean, it's right. That ball, well, I, like think he's got it for the first down. I think he's got it by about a stripe. He's got the first down by yes. a stripe? Yes. It was close. And it looks like he's going to be about a ball short. Oh. He hasn't put it down yet. Yeah, it's gonna He's be about about, yeah, about three, four inches. Yeah, not not even half, probably a third of a or a maybe, fourth of a football yeah, short. Yeah, maybe. Like I said, three or four inches. Brings up third and short. So third and inches here for Uniota. Looking to Garner, what I believe would be their fourth or fifth first down of this drive. They've just been marching down the field. Uh, let's see, one, two, yeah, third, third or fourth. Oh, my. Oops, back to pass, looking to the left side, and it's picked off. That's Thiege with the interception. And he'll return it to his own 30-yard line. Miles Thiege coming up with the interception for Clinton Massey on third and inches. The junior comes up with the pick for Clinton Massey. And that'll put their offense back out on the field with 2.08 to go in the third. Well, what that really does is it preserves the running clock. 
And I can assure you, if they want to go into a stall tactic. And about four yards no, every I'm, play. No, I'm saying they honestly could. It's possible Yota might not touch the ball again with a running clock. Now ah. You wait and see. I four, promise you. 14 minutes and eight seconds to go in the game. Of a running clock. Of a running well, clock. If you really think about it, when Clinton Massey has the ball, well, it's more or less a running four, clock. Well, anyway. kind of. It's very close to it. Yes. Now you can see here already asking. You know, the play clock's obviously still not. They, you know, they worked for the first couple of drives, but eventually were turned off. That's Hunter, the ball carrier, stopped right around the line of scrimmage. Okay, but what I'm saying is, that's almost bad because now they have to run three plays for a first down. Well, maybe come up with a stop here, force the first Falcon punt of the ball game. Well, that had been good about two quarters ago. Haven't seen A.J. Brewer yet this game. Hasn't had to come out and boot one away for Clint Massey on fourth down, although I think they've only been faced with maybe one or two fourth downs, and both of those were like, you know, one yard to go or and inches to go when they were in the red zone. So no action for A.J. Brewer tonight, although Ian McGinnis has been very busy. Four PATs, or excuse me, yeah, four PATs along with about a 30, eh, probably wasn't 30, probably a 25-ish yard field goal. Number eight, Hunter, the ball carrier. Going to get a couple flags on Nunyota after the whistle. or I presume them to be. Well, the second one for sure was. The first one, I really don't understand. Yeah, the first one, it's either offsetting. We'll wait for the call here. So we'll have one unsportsmanlike on Yunyota, and I think that's the only call we're going to get, although there were the demotion twice. I don't know, I'm saying number. So that'll give the Clint worst, Massey a first down. <clears throat> the worst part about that is it's not even like you're playing hard. You're just running your mouth, which I've never understood. Now, I'm not saying, you know, people haven't said things, and I haven't said things, but I'm saying those are things that you just have to, you just can't have you just, you just can't happen you just can't happen it's just you know whether you're cussing or saying something smart or, or whatever but it's just not good for anybody so first and 10 on the union to 49 this has a very good chance of being the last play of the drive or excuse me of the quarter is this time it's chesser on the carry, gets it to about the 45-yard line, and I'd say that's probably going to run us down to the end of the third quarter. Tackle made by number 55, James. Clinton Massey out in front, 31 to nothing over Unioda at the end of three. We'll take a quick break. You're watching Ohio High School football right here on Southern Ohio Sports Authority, presented by Ohio Health. At Ohio Health, you can see your doctor here or here, on this, or on these. And no matter if you're over here, over there, or anywhere in between, you'll feel good knowing Ohio Health provides the finest care anywhere. Schedule care today at ohiohealth.com slash finest care. Hey, Mike Glockner here from the Glockner family of dealerships. Want to wish all the fall sports athletes a very safe and successful year. Good luck. We welcome you back in here to Unioda High School for the start of the fourth quarter of tonight's 
Round one matchup here in the Division Four playoff between the Clinton Massey Falcons and the defending state champs, or excuse me, the defending state champs, the Clinton Massey Falcons and the Unioda Sherman Tanks. Bit backwards there as Brody Clutter picks up close to a first down here for the Falcons. Yeah, as previously previously mentioned, a running clock here, although that really only comes into play for Clinton Massey on about first every, downs. No, about every third play, you lose or you gain, depending upon how you do it. You lose or gain about 30, 40 seconds. So third down and two here from the Uniota 41. I promise you they're going to take five or six minutes off this clock. You wait and see. And if they had this, the, the play clock up, they'd probably be able to take it down even more. Clutter once again has the first down and a bit more across the 35-yard line and another new set of downs for the Falcons. You know, most teams would be thrilled to have two guys that can run the ball, or maybe three. Clinton Massey, you have three running backs, a fullback, a quarterback, all that are extremely capable of running the football. You know, it makes you a really dangerous team. Well, it's it's a it's a style of football that when you have a physical advantage the way that they've been able to play so far tonight, it it is. But I'm saying when you get into a team, how about they face right. a team that can stop the run? They got major major problems. First and ten here. That's Hunter, the ball carrier, hit immediately at the line of scrimmage, maybe two or three yards on the play for the senior. Yeah, you know. And that is one downfall of it is it's a tough offense to play from behind oh, from, it's, but it's, it's a heck yeah. of an offense to play, play ahead with. with. Sure. Just like Waverly had them in the last two or three years. Waverly's lost to them probably three out of the last four years. Yeah, I know the year they won the state title. They had them beat. Yeah. Had them beat. Waverly had a chance to win the game. And, I mean, you know, Waverly is, you know, they're not running the, the wing tee or whatever, but they're, they're running well, you know, empty you have and stuff. And yeah, back there. You're able to all over the you place. Know, spread it out. A couple good running backs, really nice wide outs, and then a halfway decent defense. And that was over. Those, all those games were at Massey. Second down and eight, a pitch to the right side. That's Chesser across the 25, 20, 15, and pushed out of bounds. Looks like just at the 10 yard line, a pickup of 23 on the play for Chesser. You know, it seems like anytime there's a big chunk play for Clinton Massey, it's Logan Chesser. 60 yard rushing touchdown earlier tonight at a couple other big runs, usually to the outside. 23 yard carry there for the only a sophomore is Chesser. The only sophomore of the three backs, or of the four backs, we typically see Clinton Massey use with Hunter, McDowell, and Clutter. First and goal here, that's Chesser once again across the five. Before eventually being brought down, pick up of about that, about five yards for Chesser. Set up a second and goal from the Uniota five yard line. Brings up second and goal. Just under eight minutes to go here in the final quarter of play. Quarterback Keegan Lamb just waiting on the play clock to roll down. We'll call for it now. Clutter straight ahead looking to find pay dirt. Number five, Although he'll come up carrier. about two or three yards short. It'll bring up a third and goal. See, even with the chunk play, and they, they had, what, two Not chunk plays. They're still going to take. You know, they finished out the last two or three minutes of, this, of the third quarter, and they're going to take five, five or so minutes off of this clock. It's a third and goal from the Uniota two. Looking to punch it in for their fifth touchdown of the night. 
It'll be Clutter once again, makes a move and into the end zone for the Falcon touchdown. Clutter able to make it a 37 to nothing ball game. Once again, Ian McGinnis. And the rest of the PAT crew gonna come out here and look to make it 38 to nothing. As the clock, it is a running clock. I forgot it was a running clock. So the clock continues to run for the PAT. Now it'll stop on a change of hands until they set the ball down and then it'll go again. Hold is good, McGinnis. Wait, 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 wait. Mm, yeah, he's once away, once again, puts it through. Perfect six for six on all kicks tonight is Ian McGinnis and a 38 to nothing lead for the Falcons. Talked a little bit earlier, the winner of tonight's matchup, which as of now looks to be Clinton Massey will go on to face the winner of Urbana and St. Paris Graham. So we'll most likely find out the winner of that game tonight. And it, it wouldn't surprise me either that it, it wouldn't surprise me at all if these guys won another playoff game. And I wouldn't be floored if they won two more, two more games. Right. But I think that's about as far as they can go. Three state titles in school history back to back in 2012 and 2013. Then a bit of a gap for the Falcons before finding the gold once again last season. Going 14 and one overall, actually losing in week one, starting it off 0 and one and then winning 14 straight. Who'd they lose to, Moeller? No, I do not remember. I looked at it a bit earlier as Griffin Gets it around his own five-yard line. Number two, Griffin on the is return. brought down by a host of Falcons just across the 20-yard line. Which is where the Union offense will look to take over. Well, let's see if, if you and Yoda can't put together one good drive. The bad thing about it well, is. You know, you say that they've had some really no, they, good they have, drives. But they haven't crossed the line. They just, right, they just haven't been able to get into the end zone. And, you know, in football, when you can't score, that's what's going to hurt you is this time Dement, the ball carrier, may have just gotten back to the line of scrimmage. You look back to last year, it was the Anderson Raptors who took down Clinton Massey in week one. That was a 29 to 22 loss for the Falcons. And like I said, didn't lose anywhere after that. You looked at the playoff, picked up a win over Northridge, 55 to 13. Then after that, it was Waverly, 49 to 28. Played Cincinnati, Wyoming, 42 to 14. Played Archbishop McNicholas, 28 to 27. Picked up a win over Bloom Carroll, 24 to 21 in the semifinal and then picked up a win over Ursuline, 29 to 28, to win the Division IV state title. That's old Youngstown, Ursuline. Jim Tressel still the school president up there? I, you know, I think he's retired. Like he's like totally re like retired now, I believe. There were some people there that were actually, for a minute, were kind of campaigning for him to come back to Ohio State as the president, but I just think that he thinks it's probably best for everybody, not just himself, but just to leave that alone. First and 10 here for Munyota. For Munyota, it's Griffin, the ball carrier across the 40, got a bit of space to the right side, across the 50, into Falcon territory and out of bounds at the Clinton Massey 40-yard line. Looking at the Massey defense, we've got some clean jerseys in there. We do, we got some clean shirts in there. So we'll do our best. In fact, we got some really clean shirts in there, like 11 of them. Yeah, Tristan Trampler out there. That's the only player so far I can find that I had a roster on. Well, no, that I could find either a starter or a first sub for the Falcons is Tuttle. 
claws his way to a, about a four yard gain for the Shermans. That's that little delay draw player. trap. I like the look of that play. Tackle made by number About 3.30 to go four. here in the final quarter of play. Wow. Gain of four on the play brings up second and six. Uniota still looking to punch it in here. Try to find the end zone for the first time today. Kyan Clark at the bottom of the screen. Maddox Fox up top. It'll be a handoff to Tumit who runs into immediate pressure as soon as he gets to the line of scrimmage. But I tell you what, a little bit of yards after contact there for Dement gets it to about two yards to go to the first down, maybe a little bit more than that. And about two yards. And number 62. So a third Marshall down and Hunter. two for Uniota from the Massey 31. Makes it third and two. Brings up third and two. In motion, Dollison, maybe a bit of miscommunication for Uniota as hoops. Looked like he wanted to hand it off, but there was nobody to hand it off to. Yeah, he turned the wrong way. Five hoops, the ball carrier. So he'll take the loss of about three or four yards on the play. He'll bring up about a fourth and five for Uniota. And see where the clock's at. Yeah, about a buck 53 left. Dan McSurley is 27th season at Clinton Massey. Overall record at Clinton Massey, 255 wins to 68 losses. Going to make it 256 with this one tonight. Coming out the Southern Buckeye Athletic and Academic Conference. Under a ton of pressure, airs it out, and it's intercepted by the Falcons. And stumbling out of bounds after getting the interception. That's number 32, Hunter Mons. And he returns it to about the Uniota 45 yard line. Uh, maybe the 50, thought he got a little bit further than that, but. Looks like Keegan Lamb gonna come back out and I presume the play clock now up to 40 seconds of play here, so should only take two knees here for Lamb to finish oh, this I, thing out. I think their idea of victory is, is handing the ball off, be my guess. Maybe not. I guess not. Well, they don't act like they practiced that very much. So Lamb will drop back about a yard or two. Should be able to run it down to, Anything they could run it down to about 40. 15, yeah, but. Yeah, they don't need to. If they snap it at 40, it's over with. Looks like the scoreboard on our clock is having a bit of issues. It is around 32 seconds now. And that knee will seal the deal here from Uniota High School. A 38 to nothing win for the Falcons. They'll move on to round two. Thank you all for coming out tonight. And Union Yoda will finish up their home. season at 9 and 2, coming up second place in the SVC. I believe that is their fourth playoff berth in seven seasons, maybe six seasons for Union Yoda. Got their first in 2016 then made it a trio with 16, 17, 18. Missed in 19, got it in 20. Maybe that's five and seven years, something like that. Well, let's face it, that, that whole thing has changed in, in a very short period of time. It used to be, you know, four teams in a district or in a region made the playoffs, and let's face it, in that particular Massey format, probably no, not wouldn't in. even make yeah. it. No, they wouldn't have made it with eight. You know, it was eight for a long, long time, but it was four back in the 90s and probably on into the early 2000s. And really, 
you had to be pretty good to make the playoffs. Right, you got to go nine and one, ten and zero, oh, win your division, whole yeah, nine yards. Yeah, yeah. So I'm saying there was no pretenders in the playoffs, but now there are pretenders in the playoffs, and and uh, I don't know if that's. Uh, I mean, yeah, more people make the playoffs, and you get the hoodie and the T-shirt, but I'm not too sure. You know, to be able to make the playoffs anymore can't be the goal. You know, right? You want to. You, you, you wanna, know, it never wanna, is the goal to no. just to make the playoffs. You want to obviously well, no, be it, able to go play week eleven, yeah, week twelve. Yeah. You know, maybe you look at a team. You know, I know Huntington gets their or had their first playoff yeah. game in school history. So maybe at that point you're looking, hey, let's try to make the playoffs set school history. But once right. you've made it, you know, like in Unioda's case, yeah, I believe this was win. their fifth time. Yeah. And they've never won a play. Well, they won a playoff game. Twenty twenty. COVID year. Yeah. But. Against a team with a losing record. Right. Played Hillsborough back here. In the 2020 season and went on to lose to Archbishop McNicholas on presumably the worst turf field yeah, in the state. I, I, I was on it, but I didn't play on it. So, as of now, that'll do it from all of us here at Southern Ohio Sports Authority from Uniota High School here tonight. Once again, the final Clint Massey, 38. Uniota, nothing. Have a good rest of your night.